Hello everyone, my name is Troy and welcome to another homebrew update week of October 15th, 2017. Now before we get started, I'm going to put something I totally forgot to do in the last week's video. Not last week's, but the week before that because I didn't do one last week. What that will be is background music. Let's go ahead and add that in. Much better. Okay, let's get on with all the different homebrew stuff that was released this week. To start off this week, this isn't really a homebrew related thing, but it is important for the homebrew devs and for the end user as well. Um, on the Nintendo Switch, the firmware 4.0 has been released. It adds some new features such as being able to record 15 minutes worth of gameplay, actual video of it, but also just like any firmware update, it also fixes some patches and bugs. Now, if you are Nintendo Switch and you do want to mod your console, do not update. Stay on that lucky 3.0 firmware that you've got. If you're on firmware 3.01, it's definitely recommended to still stay on that one, even though you can't use Pega Switch because it's always recommended to stay on the lowest firmware that you can. As far as homebrew on Nintendo Switch, the ReSwitch team, the same team behind the Pega Switch exploit, has been successfully been able to dump the boot ROM of the Nintendo Switch. The boot ROM runs before anything else on the Nintendo Switch, um, and as far as right now, it doesn't actually lead into any extra exploits, but it is able to help dive more into finding bugs and such in the exploits. They'll be able to read the files and things like that and try and figure out something from there. So no, it is not actual useful for the end user, but later in the end, that definitely will help. Over on the 3DS side, we have an update to NTR boot hacks. The popular R4i 3DS flash card is now able to be used on NTR boot meaning there's more variety for you to actually be able to get to hack on your 3DS. The very last thing we're talking about Nintendo-wise is going to be the SNES Classic. Now, this was actually released a couple weeks ago, but right when I put up my last homebrew update video, it actually was just released as I was uploading it. So, I'm going to say it now. You are now successfully able to add ROMs to your own SNES Classic if you want to. Also with the SNES Classic, the Haxi 2 software has been updated to actually let you now use the turbo button. So you can set turbo controls on just your normal SNES Classic controller there. It's pretty cool. Last but not least for this week, there really isn't that much stuff for this whole week, last two weeks really. That's why I didn't make a video last week actually. But we're going to be talking about the PS4. This is last up on the list. and We have some very, very exciting news for the PS4 as well. But let me start off with kind of the more smaller stuff. The hacker and developer QWERTY has found a way to run a kernel exploit and a user mode exploit on the PS4 newest firmware 5.0. As current of writing, this is definitely the highest firmware that there is on the PS4. Now, QWERTY did say that he will not actually release the firmware unless he has two exploits already av available, one for him and then another one so that way he could release to someone else. Which, completely understandable, you want to be able to have a exploit into something that's all by yourself, just kind of a private exploit so that way you have ways to still go into something, you know, like find other exploits just in case if one gets patched. Completely understandable, I don't blame him. Also on the PS4, the user flat underscore Z and shared a video of him running homebrew on the firmware 4.55. Not only did he show himself running homebrew, he also showed himself installing a package file, which in this case was an actual game that he was able to fully install onto the PS4 and also run it. This is great news for people who want to try run their backups on their PS4. Also, if you want to actually do use it for backup purposes, you will be able to run the games from there. That way you don't always have to enter a disc in. To me, it's just a lot quicker doing it that way. So that's two exploits we already know that would not be released. But the Fail Overflow team has our backs. They put a write-up of an exploit that they had used over a year ago to run Linux on the PS4. The write-up includes a kernel exploit as well as a user mode exploit. That is all you need to run Linux on your system. Now, this is actually a fully released thing. They just tell you how to do it. They actually didn't release the coding that they use. So other developers will need to take reign of that and make a code for it to actually release for the end user like myself. But this is tremendous news because this is the closest we've ever actually been 
to getting a actual released exploit for the PS4, other than the 1.76 exploit that was, you know, forever ago. When this exploit gets released, if it ever does, I'm really hoping that it does, you will be able to run your own homebrew games, your own backup games, even farther down the line, you'll be able to run your own custom firmware on it, which is a huge, huge thing I want to see on the PS4. Alright guys, that's it for this homebrew update this week. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below. If I left anything out, also comment that as well if you find anything that you thought that would be important for me to add. I'll possibly add it to the next video. And just like last week guys, you can find everything I put in the description, including all the articles and everything like that. Alright guys, I hope to see you next week.